Makari Kinji. Saving Jujutsu Kaisen? Alright, you got my attention. Let's see what you have to say. What's up guys, I'm here and here we are to do a breakdown slash live reaction and review and analysis of Superior IQ's How Hakari Will Save Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, like, I'm not exactly a Hakari hater as some are. Like, I know there's some people who despise the character, who would wish to tear the character limb from limb, and I ain't talking about a jackpot. I'm talking about some real haters, almost if not superior to the level that I despise that thing, Panda. But I'm interested, I'm interested. Hakari's definitely been a character who has been given a lot of hype, but just really hasn't been living from it or living up to it. So I'm interested to see what Superior IQ has to offer. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. <clears throat> Editing me. Ready. Three, two, one, go. I know there's going to be... What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact. I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact. Check out Superior IQ, because I will be yapping. The video, the original video is about a uh, juicy 12 minutes and 2 seconds long. We're going to be here longer for that. Longer than that. So, if you want to check out the original video without all my yapping, please check out the link to it. It'll be in the description down below. Check out the link to Superior IQ's channel. Also, be in the description down below. A great content creator. Covers a variety of topics. A big JJK focus right now. But hey, I'm a guy who covers a variety of topics with a big JJK focus right now. So, don't knock it till you try it. But also, before we hop into how he believes Akari will save Jujutsu Kaisen, allow me to give, like, a guess on how he could. And, like, how literal the hypothetical saving of Jujutsu Kaisen will be. So, like, if I had to rub my brain cells together. I don't think Superior IQ, nor anybody believes that Hakari Kinji is going to be responsible for the defeat, English, for the defeat of Ryo Mansuka. I don't think he thinks that. I don't think I think that. I don't think anybody thinks that. But, hypothetically, if I had to give one thing that Hakari Kinji could save us from... It's the endless, infinite, unstoppable, and ongoing dismantle spam. The cleave spam. The shrine spam. Honestly, if I had to have one complaint, one complaint with everything that's been happening post the fall of Satoru Gojo, it's the fact that Ryoman Sukuna has absolutely no excuse outside of, you know, legit boredom and ease of use to not be using different techniques that we know for a fact he has. Whether it be Fuga, whether it be whether or not he has the Ten Shadows, he has so many other things, presumably just based on the mystery of the character, that we could start diving into, yet Gege and by proxy Sukuna have yet to, then I think Akari could save us from that. By just making dismantle and cleaves and everything ineffective against Akari. Remember, we had Satoru Gojo just chad okay, not chad walking, but moving and living and vibing through a malevolent shrine. He did that for real, for real. And we have it confirmed by Ur Ume, who should know, who should have a good idea of both Gojo's max RCT speed by watching the entire battle, and especially Sukuna's max RCT speed by being there with Sukuna the entire time. Ur Ume already believes, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. This guy, this guy, when he's in this jack whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got even better regeneration speed than Gojo Santoru and Ryomen Sukuna. So, I think Hikari could hypothetically save Jujutsu Kaisen by finally getting Sukuna to dive into that bag, to start digging deep. And of course, Hikari already kind of has the means and metrics and potential, with Sukuna's domain still being gone, to force Sukuna to do different things, to get diabolical, to get devious with it. Because unlike basically everyone else, even characters with amazing RCT and amounts of ability to RCT like Yuta Okotsu, you can't just dice Hikari in half. You can't just remove a limb and remove another limb or a leg of both legs or even separate his torso. You can't even just Gallon Broski or Gojo Santoru Broski and expect him to not keep moving forward. Of course he can keep moving forward. So Hikari could hypothetically save us from the fugue state not legitimately, because I don't think Akari would beat Sukuna, but he can save us from Sukuna doing the same thing. Oh yeah, and again, and again, and again. Don't get me wrong, I'm loving Sukuna. I've gone from 
Gojo Glazer and Sugana Indifferenter to Gojo Glazer and Sugana Slopper. Like, I've, I've reached both peaks, essentially. I don't know. Sugana's been growing on me. Probably Stockholm Syndrome. But regardless of that, I'll still admit, that's my one issue. And Akari can very easily fix that issue with the abilities he has at hand, and without Sugana having his domain back and the high possibility of really quick jackpots if Akari's feeling really, really feverish today, which I assume he would be after an extensive battle with Ur-Ume, it's entirely likely that Ryoman Sukuna could do nothing to stop the Immortal Man with what he uses right now. But hypothetically, if he were to be forced to switch it up, that could definitely save Jutsu Kaisen in the eyes of a lot of people right now. So, let's see what Superior IQ finally has to say. A ton of comments talking about how Akari is getting stalled by Sukuna's lackey, and he's probably gonna die to Arami, and you know what I have to say to that? That is two people say Arame. It is, it is Arame. It is Arame. I will, I will try. I'm gonna try to switch to Arame. I've been saying Urume for so long that it will probably still come out as Urume sometimes, but I'm going to say Arame, because Restless Gambler says Arame, I think even Eternal Flame says Arame, I, I swear everyone else says Arame, it's literally just me, it's probably straight from the anime, I just don't watch the anime, which is bad on my part, I just, I need to, it's literally a clip, so Arame, 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 and yeah, this is like the most immediate, easy, light work reputation, like, dog, what do you mean a car's going to save Jujutsu when he literally... <laughs> No offense, Sir Arame, but, like, if we were looking at the big three of antagonists that we had left over post-Gojo's sealing, or po Gojo's unsealing, it really was Arame, Kinjaku, and Tsukuna. And as much as an Arame fan as I am, if you had to ask me who I was least excited to see cook and or who I expected the least from post-Gojo's unsealing, it was also going to be Arame, just because I liked Kenny more, and I even liked Sukuna more way back when, even when I was in my peak stages of Gojo Glazing. So, like, I will admit, I have to give Arame even more credit than it was before, because they've been dragging Hikari out for what? Now, at the time of recording the most recent release is Chapter 254, so after... No, before even the start of Kashimo versus Sukuna, we've gone through Kashimo, Higuruma, Yuji, Yuda, Maki, and now Kusakabe. Six whole individuals. And I think I may be missing a couple, because suddenly there's that little interference with Mei Mei. And I guess, you, yeah, you have Ino as well, who's also there fighting as well. So, like, we've gone through, like, eight whole characters. And while in universe it may have been like 10 minutes, still, that's a lot. Choso as well. That nine whole characters, that's a lot for Hikari and Arame to still be battling unabated. So while it's impressive for Arame for holding off the heavy hitters for one of that long, it it kind of does hard damage to Hikari's potency and potential as a combatant for someone like Sukuna. But, of course, once again, the doors have kind of been opened by Kusakabe, who presumably should be weaker than the heavy hitters, considering he wasn't considered one of them, but he's able to damage Suka. So, Hikari should... So, like, the doors open for Hikari to cook, but at the same time, due to Arame holding Hikari back for so long, yeah, naturally, naturally, people are going to be a little bit skeptical. And, hey, it's the same reason I'm a little bit skeptical, but I'm excited to see what superior IQ has to cook. Let's see, let's see. I don't... Like I Language! Care. Gosh I darn it! Gosh! Do gosh! What is it? <sighs> Let me see. I should have known. I think I even recognized that clip. <sighs> Let's see. Editing me? You're gonna have to wake up, buddy. You're gonna have to wait before I wake. But let's see. Oh! No! I, I hit the wrong thing. But let's take a look. A dream about Hakari's potential role in this war beyond just fighting Gurame. This video can be viewed as more of a prayer rather than a theory. It's a mixture of oh, both, okay. to be honest, but either way, you're going to see me as a delusional Akari fanboy, which is fair. But these type of things happen, or these type of videos happen, because I've been deprived of Akari action for months, and have to watch all these other characters get cool moments. Be prepared to wonder if I'm mentally sane because I'm about to speak my fantasy scenarios into existence. And for all you weird guys, it's not like that. Stop. By the way, please save yourself the time of comment. Okay, okay, so... So this is going to be some Akari copium. That's fine. That's fine. As a person who is like huffing straight Maki copium, I can't even mock, bro. I, 
I'm I will I refuse to throw a stone from this very fragile glass house. <laughs> so, so like he's got it. He's got it. I can't even knock him. Because once again, it's kind of it's it's the dilemma, right? Especially ever since Gojo Santoru fell. If you've had a favorite character in Jujutsu Kaisen who wasn't Suga, you were hoping to see them do something against Suga. And like for the Hakari fans, they have legit been starved. We've Hakari versus Uraume total has probably been about 75% of a chapter. It may be 15 pages total. Because it's about half of 246, I do believe. We open up a chapter with a card versus Uraume. But then, actually, no, I say that's about 70% 70, 70 of a chapter right there. So I think it's been about a total chapter in terms of fight length. Takaba got multiple chapters with Kenny. And, of course, Yuta came in and cleaned Kenny up. Takaba got more than Hakari. Hakari, who's been hyped since the beginning of the series, as early as Goodwill, I do believe, got less so far against the major antagonist than Takaba did, a character who is also 100 chapters young, in terms of just mentions and actual hypothetical implications in the narrative. Who else? Higuruma, numerous chapters. Kashimo, Two, but still numerous chapters. He even got to end off 236 as the next big thing. And then he got the two chapters after that. Yuji, he's kind of been here and there and everywhere. He's been hopping back and forth, whether it be with Higuruma, whether it be with Yuji. He's been the jump fest. He's been playing his traditional role of adding on to other combatants. Choso, while he didn't have much of a moment, he did have a moment getting speared. And now he had his moment of trying to talk up Yuji and help him get back in the right mindset. So, like, he's right. A bunch of different characters have been getting their due diligence, their due serve. Even if it's, like, obviously them just getting beat by Sukuna eventually. But still, Hakari's yet to get that. And what Hakari he has in his maybe like chapter worth of fighting with Arume. Sorry, Arame. Outside of that, it's not been much. And unfortunately, every single time we see Hakari fight, he he has his moments, right? Like slamming Arume through the building, drop kicking them, all that's cool, but it doesn't feel like it's doing anything. It doesn't feel like the battle's really progressing. It's stagnant. It's kind of an issue that I've found a lot of people having with the fight that's displayed on screen right now. The Hakari versus Kashimo fight. Where it kind of felt like nothing was happening. Like, there, of course, there are moments and chaotic instances in that fight. It's why it's one of my favorite fights in the series to this day. But I've heard people, people who I know, had active complaints about the fight as it was going on. And especially in retrospect. Because it feels like basically nothing happens. Like, oh, Hakari lands all these hits on Kashimo. Kashimo takes barely any damage. Oh, Kashimo does all this damage to Hakari. He immediately heals it off. Nothing really matters. Same thing is what's happening with Hakari versus Arame right now. And that's unfortunate, especially if you are a Hakari fan. It's why he's kind of gotten the reputation as the pillow puncher. Like, once again, Kashimo after his battle. Kashimo is someone who's confirmed to have basically no RCT and was out of cursed energy anyway. Meaning, all the damage that he took from Hakari was cumulative. He comes out looking better than Hakari did despite losing the fight. Because Hakari barely did any damage to him. Charles, barely any damage. But of course, you know, Charles was a random. Hikari wasn't going to randomly off some Charles. And even with her roommate, barely any damage after doing big bombastic things. So yeah, Pillow Puncher Hikari, it's it's not even just a meme, it's low-key kind of accurate. So I can understand why Hikari fans have definitely been like, oop, I almost pierced myself with a pencil. In fact, I think I did. But like, I get why Hikari fans have been like, give it to me. Give it to me right now. Like, give me a beat. Like, like I understand. I understand. I'm, I'd be desperate too. Tech, look at look at how much I was feeding for Maki. I got Maki sent through a building, but like still I got Maki beats, and I'll take those. But Hakari really hasn't gotten that. And even in their battle against their current opponent, what they've gotten hasn't really helped any allegations and are currently just chipping away further and further. Like and especially I'll admit, the Yuda fans have been especially cruel to Hakari. <laughs> Like, whether it be in the comments, whether it be in video, like, the Yuta fans have been having a field day with the fact that Hakari is out here struggling to do anything to the second fiddle of Sukuna. Meanwhile, Yuta, so far, has the best performance against Sukuna outside of Satoru Gojo himself. Like, the comparability of the two, it's really, really rough. So I can understand why Superior and any other Kari fan out there has been itching and scratching for it. Y'all, y'all are fiends for it, but... Hey, as a fiend myself, I can't really knock your ass off. I think see. if you want to belittle Hakari by saying he's weaker than base Kashimo and scale him to his pre-typeskip version, 
right now at this current moment. And you want to use that as a way to invalidate his potential contributions. I would not be paying that any attention. By the way, guys. Okay, so here's the thing. Oh, yeah, subscribe to Superior IQ. Also, if you haven't subscribed to me, I really appreciate it. I'm trying to hit 10K relatively soon. We're at, I think, 9.13K. I greatly appreciate it if you haven't subscribed already. And if you have subscribed, hit the like button. Trust me, it helps. It helps so much. Every single video that gets more likes genuinely does better. Trust me. I stare at my analytics darn near every day. If I'm not recording, I'm staring at my analytics. And if I'm not staring at my analytics or recording, I'm working. So, like, <laughs> trust me, it helps a lot. But that aside, I can see why people would try to use the pre time skip scaling. Mainly because Sukuna himself, whether it be kind of indirectly or if not directly, has kind of admitted or shown that eh, no one's really actually gotten stronger. Like, the only thing that's improved is their defensive capabilities. But as we've seen with Hikari, when he's in Jackpot, he doesn't even care about his defenses. So any hypothetical defensive boosts are basically irrelevant for Jackpot Hikari. So I could see why people would bring that up. I won't say that's invalid, but obviously the PRIQ is like, ah, no, nah, we ain't even worrying about that. And that's fine. Once again, I'm... I'm more fine with Hikari, someone who's a naturally sloppy fighter and has implications of not even bothering to reinforce himself when he's in jackpot outside of, like, his offensive attacks. I'd be perfectly fine with him getting, like, an attack buff or having an attack buff built into his domain or a hypothetical jackpot or something. Like, once again, Hikari is one of the characters, just like with Yuta, who I didn't really care what they pulled out. They could have pulled out anything and I would have just... Yes! Like, I, I really don't care. They are two of the characters who are explained enough, but have just enough vagueness surrounding their abilities that Gage could kind of pull out anything. It's how I feel about Tsukuna and how I felt about Kenjaku. You, Gage could have literally put anything on the page and I would have nodded and clapped like jingling keys in front of a baby. It literally, they could have done anything. So, I can understand. Give a car whatever. Lit literally anything to make it feel like he's actually a heavy hitter. I'm sorry, outside that Kashimo fight, the early performance, it just ain't cooking for me. Even the Kashimo fight ain't really cooking for me. But then again, I'm a Kashimo Creamer. So, like, I'm not so much a Akari hype beast, more of a Kashimo Creamer. So, of course, I'm looking at that fight differently. And that's the thing with Akari. I gotta look at things differently. So, let's see if Superior IQ can open my eyes. If you that's enjoyed cool. these JJK videos, do me the favor of subscribing to the channel. Shout out to my Hakari brothers on Twitter, the doctor specifically. He's a part of my Hakari circle and has enlightened me on a crazy perspective that I think is peak, but you guys might think I'm delusional. I will speak on how I expect Hakari to contribute if the merger doesn't happen, but it occurred to me that this fight probably won't be as simple as the heroes winning and the merger should probably happen. In my opinion, is there any way for them to win this fight right now? Maybe with Megami, but I think not. The merger has been built up to be a That- See, see, ugh. This ain't even Akari based, so I, try, I, won't, I won't try to spend too much time on it. This is a Akari video, first and foremost. The merger is... Here's the thing. The hypothetical narrative cost of the merger outweighs the narrative benefits of the merger, right? Like, at least in my opinion. Because remember what the cost of the merger is. Every... Well, maybe not. So we're going to put that stipulation on it, but we aren't sure if that's a hard stipulation. Like, it's a rule built into the Culling Games. But I think it is. I think you can't start the merger until the Culling Games is complete. The Culling Games can only end when Sukuna slaughtered literally everyone. And here's the thing. Even if you want to say, well, maybe it's not everyone, everyone. Just the Culling Game players. Yuji's a Culling Game player. Yuda's a Culling Game player. Hakari's a Culling Game player. Panda's a Culling Game player. Go ahead, Sukuna. Get him up out of here, please. But, like... We have too many cast members as Culling Game players, and if it is a confirmed thing that every like the Culling Games need to end, they must cease before the merger can happen. That win con, it can't like unless like we would legit have to switch to Sugan Kaisen. We would straight up. A lot of people have been joking and memeing and talking about, and even then, just the more and more the current Fuchsia the narrative goes on, a lot of people are just low key starting to believe that it is Sugan Kaisen. Like, this really was... <laughs> the the Jusu Kaisen was the Sukuna we made along the way. And if that's the case, then that's fine. If you think Sukuna should slaughter everybody, and we should just get Sukuna v. Merger, then yeah, the Merger can happen. But if not, unless some super weird stipulations are met, Merger shouldn't happen. And also, 
Merger should be super, super strong and impossible to slaughter. So if merger happens, we should giga lose. And right now, we should already giga lose against Sukuna. So I'm, as much as I wanted to see the merger, with the way our current cast and crew is struggling with an Omega fatigue, brain damage, suppressed, holding back out the wazoo, just freshly hit a Black Flash Sukuna, what am I really expecting them to do against the merger? That wouldn't feel like nonsense. That's the thing. Now, of course, you can say, well, Pencil Man, power scaling doesn't really matter. It's just whatever makes a good story. But what good story even comes from the merger? Like, that's my main thing, right? Like, if we're tackling on a story aspect, it's kind of like why I'm not even mad. Well, I'm a little disappointed, but I'm not even mad that Sukuna didn't end up being the main antagonist. Or no, Kenny didn't end up being the main antagonist. And Sukuna seems to have just fully taken over that role because Sukuna has actual ties to the characters, actual opinions on them. Like, the whole dynamic with Yuji, opinions on Maki and her very existence, interest in respective students, stuff like that. Like, there's actual things. What connection does the merger, especially considering it's just going to be a wild beast, what narrative or character motivation or connection are we really expecting from it? I've got nothing. I would, I would feel... Here's the thing. I would feel the same way about the merger, the switch from Sukuna to the merger as the final boss, as I feel about Madara to Kankia. If you go through Naruto with a skeptic's eye, you can somewhat see Kaguya coming. There's enough weird hints. Especially from Hagoromo's proper introduction on, like, we drizzle and dabble into the idea of Kaguya a lot easier. Of course, that's the late game expectation setting, but to be fair, so is the merger. The merger is a really recently introduced mechanic. I think, once again, the merger is another concept that's barely 100 chapters old. Like, heck, is it even that old? Like, was the merger introduced as a concept? No, 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 no. The merger was introduced. Yeah, it's barely under chapters old. It was introduced when we met Tangan, which is, like, in the 150s or in the 160s. So, like, realistically, the merger is very, very young as a concept, too. So, not only is there no character motivation, not only should a cast not be able to beat it, but also I feel like it just costs too much. Like, slaughtering everybody, including a bunch of random innocent civilians. I, I just don't really see the vision for the merger but of course that's me and my respective biases against merger kun merger sama so i'm probably not the best <laughs> to, to align with my opinions on that but big let's see. thing in the manga for so long now and i don't see gege missing out on the opportunity for it to actually happen obviously the first thing that needs to happen is that everyone in the current games ends up dying including yuji with the only exception of megami and who's in megami's body Sukuna. And this will lead to the question, how would they come back from this? Unless you think Sukuna wins here and JJK ends that Sukuna actually won, I doubt that. But I think Akari is likely to be one of the final people to intervene against Sukuna, as I delve more into that later in the video due to his circumstances with the ramen. This puts him in a position where I think he can bring back the students from the dead. That might sound crazy, but hold up. In this way, Sukuna activates the merger and the students still live. The catalyst for Akari being able to do something like this is the world cutting slash. The world cutting slash is just a dismantle with the target being the world and by extension, everything inside it. Akari could potentially potentially mimic this concept with a death binding vow, Jackpot Akari with his insane level of cursed energy will gamble everyone's life by using renewal or revert or what Hakari calls it a pseudo spin in order to revert an instant specifically on his allies and extends the techniques target like Sukuna did. Hakari doing this would parallel Yuta making a death binding vow with Rika to use his strongest attack but instead for Hakari's version it highlights Hakari's defense instead of Yuta's offense. This would allow everyone to die and Sukuna to begin the merger while everyone coming back to life while at least the guys on the battlefield the main heavy hitters like Yuta, Yuji, and Maki, maybe even other guys, who knows? So the only problem with this is that how would Akari use a death binding back? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let him keep going because I've been yawning for a little bit. I, as you, you can probably tell by my face. Little, little, teeny tiny bit hesitant, but I'm gonna let him cook. I'm gonna let him cook. He needs to die in order for the merger to happen. That's a good question. But if we actually look at the revert ability or the pseudo spin that Hakari uses, the two times he both used it against Kashimo, he got absolutely knocked out. And then a moment after is when the ability took place. So it can be a similar thing with Sukuna. And like I said in this video, and I'm gonna say in the future, Akari after he beats Arame should probably fight Sukuna and potentially making it so that he could be the final person to be standing in front of Sukuna. Okay. 
He said, so, okay. Once again, I'm going to put my I don't care jingle the keys in front of my face. I'm, I'm leaning with it, somewhat rocking with it. Here's the thing, though, right? You know, I actually don't mind. I don't mind Hikari actually being that important. I was, I was really like, that's kind of a whack way to do it. But in the sense of technique expansion, the only thing that I'm a little bit worried about is that Hikari can only do that within his domain. Meaning one of two things. Either A, Hikari needs to suddenly manifest a massive domain expansion, like bigger than anyone we've ever seen, with just his base amounts of cursed energy. Because remember, when he can do domain again, he's no longer in jackpot. He doesn't have infinite cursed energy to fuel it. Meaning he would have to make a bigger closed barrier domain than Sasuke Gojo did, and or Uyui would have to like teleport every single body within the range of Hikari's domain expansion activation, which is possible, but still a little bit strange. And two, it's the idea of technique extension to other people who wouldn't benefit from the immortality. Because the, at least from my understanding, what makes the technique extension of Sukuna really work out, and not necessarily cause too many problems in the narrative, is the idea that the technique extension works on changing the fundamental nature of what the technique is targeting. But the technique was never meant to target Sukuna. So instead of attacking at a person or a general area, it's attacking at space itself as a technique extension. For Hikari to do a technique extension like this, not only would he have to change the type of targeting he's doing, but you have to change the type of targeting he's doing inside his domain and then spread it out to numerous people. Even if he just revives the other three heavy hitters or the other two heavy hitters plus Yuji, depending on how you see it, then he would have to apply his curse technique to three separate people, either at the same time or one by one incrementally, and two, he would have to be surviving Sukuna while this happens. And three, it's the idea of that gamble even being possible considering the shifting. Because the thing with Hakari's technique is that it's self-targeting. Basically, everything except for the doors and the balls are specifically built for Hakari. How the domain ends up working, how he interacts with the domain, the music playing, all that, it literally all originates with him. So for him to sacrifice renewal onto somebody else, that wouldn't even be a target. That wouldn't be extending the technique. That would be changing the technique. So I guess you could hypothetically argue it if he does something like reverse curse technique, where he figures it out in the moment and then applies it to his allies. Because that would be switching the target, fully removing it, intent would still be a technique extension. But then again, that would be base Sakari doing that. Someone who never learned RCT, that would apply. But Ah, I don't know. The idea of slaughtering everybody only to bring them back is something I've never necessarily been a fan of mechanically either. Because, like, it feels like you do it because you committed to... You couldn't commit. Like, you, you can't commit. That's why I'm always iffy on revivals as a whole. I know JJK, is, it's not new for JJK to revive characters. Sukuna is a revival character. All the coming in characters are revived characters. Heck, Yuji Itadori is a revived character on like, what, two separate occasions now. So, it's not impossible and it wouldn't ruin anything and it would be nice to give a car something to do. So, I, I'm not mad at it. I'm just like, I feel like the complications of this would be so high and so heavy handed that I feel like everyone would be looking at Gege like, <laughs> but you know let's see let's let's let him keep cooking let's let him keep cooking what the, would i be mad if akari did something this important no not just I'm because bad. of the time well, he arrives see. at the fight it's because of how long he can stay alive with his abilities this meaning hakari could potentially get this death binding vow off while alive and still taking effect the moment he's dead like how it did for kashimo when he got absolutely knocked out with this pseudo spin it rewinds a single instant. So in this scenario, when everybody's dead and Akari dies, he can use his Binding Bell in order to extend the technique's target on everyone, rewinding a single instant. And the instant for everybody would be the moment that Sakuna killed them. So essentially, rewinding death for all those characters. But the second Akari dies is when the merger is now capable of happening. But then he brings them all back to life. But the games has officially ended. Or maybe Hikari doesn't need to make a Binding Bell to do this and he learned it over the time skip training, but that's probably a reach since Akuna needed to, to do all that to learn how to make the World Cutting Slash. Obviously. And, and like, uh, I want to see the vision so badly, but then again, I'm huffing straight copium.
in the, and that's another thing. The sequence. How does that apply? Because remember, what the... And I guess because that's where you would get the death binding valve boost. But like, putting your life on the line. But, at least from my understanding, all the sequences need to be within that previous spin, that previous roll. And notably, Hikari, at least from what we've seen, hasn't opened a domain in a minute. So like... What would count as the previous sequence for this case? And would it even apply to things that happened outside the domain? Because the sequence stuff can only happen inside the domain and only in specific types of domains. Because remember, the sequence and the respins, the pseudo spins, are something that are very specific. Like, they can't happen all the time. Even Kajimu even knows this in this fight. He's like, okay, he can't do those pseudo spins now. Because of something. I forget what the full context is. I haven't read the Akari vs. Kashima fight in a minute. But with that being the case, I feel like there's just... It'd be, it'd be too much of a stretch. It'd be too much. Hypothetically, I'd be, I'd be okay with it. Here's, here's how I'd be okay with it. If you do it... And they're all fighting in Akari's domain. Very similar to what Yuta was doing. Where Maki was in, she agreed to being in the domain. She was on the verge, but she got up after the Black Flash and kept fighting. Yuta finally came back, you know, stitches or whatever. He managed to heal himself together. Yuji got back up, healed himself. And they're all fighting Tsukuna, and Tsukuna just wipes them all. Like, straight up wipes them all. And it's like, I'm bored, I'm starting the merger. And then Hikari, on like, in that half a second verge of death, reruns the sequence as Tsukuna advances through time by starting the merger. That'd be good. But remember, that can't even happen because there are numerous other Culling Game players running about. Not just in Shinjuku. They're everywhere. So, for that to occur, Sukuna would have to start dipping, running everywhere else and slaughtering everything. And everyone would have to <laughs> book after him. Because it isn't just our cast and crew who are the living Culling Game Well, English. It isn't just our cast and crew who are the living Culling Game players. It's also the ones in every single colony. Remember, that's what Kenjaku was doing. He was still cleaning up stragglers. He was in Lake Gosho. And remember, the Gojo versus Sukuna fight at most took place over like half an hour. It wasn't actually that long in universe. And while Kenny's fast, I highly doubt he cleaned out every other colony. There'd be so many stragglers left. Not to talk about the curses they're still running about. So I'm not sure it's possible for Sukuna to even start the merger. And once again, the extension, it could be, you could hypothetically super specific it. And you could use, like, well, technically, everyone on Akari's side, everyone on the house's side is affected by the effect in this moment because they're all within the domain. But anything outside the domain, like, specifically overriding the sequences where they were cut in half in Yuta's case, they were Black Flash in Maki's case, they were cleaved in Yuji's case, I think that is too far out and too specific and too separate from the domain, even for a death binding vow to clear. Because remember, the only other death binding vow we've seen in Yuta's was specifically meant to buff his offenses, and it did, but it still just beat Uzumaki and overrode Ghetto and took his arm off. It didn't It didn't do anything, like, next-level insane, like this would be. Reviving three, at bare minimum, just three entire characters while you're trying to cheat death by using a death-binding vow, I think that'd be way too much. But if it happened, i just... I once again jungle the keys in front of my face. I'll be down with it. Me calling this a death binding vow means Akari should die in order to do this. But then yet again, he was gonna die anyway for the sake of the merger because he's a Culling Games player. So if he does yeah. die, his ability maybe still could even bring him back. But listen, I know this theory is kind of far fetched. So I'm not crazy, <laughs> but I really do believe the merger has to happen. Somehow, some way, these guys gotta die, and somehow, some way, they gotta come back. Okay, so in the event that these two. I don't think so. I like at least in my opinion. Like notably, I'm gonna make a full video talking about this more in depth. I think everyone will die except for Yuji. I think it truly will be Yuji and Sukuna on the end of it all. Like straight up, it's those two. And if I had to think of a super dark, super tragic, yet fitting into the themes of death and mortality and the inability to save everybody, like fitting into the major themes of Jujutsu Kaisen and the continuous story of Jujutsu Kaisen being the loss of life, especially surrounding Yuji Tadori. If I had to pick a theme, it would literally be him, Sukuna, and it would have to be Megami being forced or forcing Yuji or Yuji being forced to slaughter Megami. The last tie that Sukuna has to the world before he ends it all. 
I, I still do not buy them. I mean, I once again, this is the merger, just like this, this hypothetical crazy Atari theory, the merger isn't something I'd be mad at happening. Logistically, I just wouldn't be. I'd be like, fine, whatever. I, in fact, I do, I agree with Superior IQ and the idea that, like, yeah, we've been building up to this for a minute now. It, it's been 100 chapters since the mention back with Tengen, and we had this image for going on, I think, now 50 chapters. This image is like 50 chapters old, because this is right before the Choso and Yuki fight against Kenjaku. So, yeah, this does work, but once again, due to the char lack of character motivations, the drastic cost of the merger, the fact that everybody would have to go, including Yuji, since he's a killing game player, the complications of having to bring everybody back afterwards, the absolute nightmare that would cause Gage in terms of like writing credibility considering how like regardless of how he does it how wild it would be for everyone to immediately revive and also the fact that kenny's already been taken out of the narrative the main guy who wanted to see the merger and no one else really wants it other than Tsukuna to fight it i guess i, I just don't i don't really i don't put too much weight on the merger happening i would like to see it i think it could be neat but at the same time i wouldn't be mad if it didn't it's managed to defeat that. Sukuna Let's before see. he activates the merger. Here's how it might go down for Akari. Because I think Megami being the crucial reason for. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. I, 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 that's how I see it. I see merger not happening. But then again, people are talking about Evil Megami. I'll, I still need to make a video about that. I really don't want Evil Megami. That would that would be stupid, but at the same time, it would fit into my whole narrative idea of like, hey, wouldn't it be crazy if Yuji had to slaughter his best friend? Ah, ah, all my Spider-Man 2 players out there, you know what I'm talking about? Ah, ah, you know, my Kingdom Hearts 1 players? Ah, ah, like, the drama's there. It's sprinkled in automatically. I mean, I mean, I mean. But let's see. Last, it's still a huge possibility. So it occurred to me that there must be a reason why Gege is stalling this fight for so long. Even when Arame said she was about to crush Akari with everything she has, seven or eight chapters later, we are still at a stalemate. And both the fighters are relatively fine and nothing occurred between them. I find it oddly convenient that Gege will stall out this fight for so long while Yuta just got bodied with a world slash, Yuji is on the floor gasping for air, and Maki just got black flashed in 4k with three different angles for us to see. Akari is undoubtedly one of the strongest sorcerers that good guys have, and if you're not a blind hater or been influenced by TikTok or Twitter to believing Hakari will run out of luck because that's apparently peak writing and he will die, then you probably believe alongside me that Akari will for sure win this fight and beat Urame. All the students have gotten tremendously stronger. Akari is no different. In fact, Akari is a character alongside Yuta that was- Once again though, the question becomes, did they actually get stronger, or is it just offensively? A lot of people, well, admittedly, I say a lot of people, it's just mainly my comment section and me, who, like, initially, and I thought this, because he brings up the perfect statement Akari by Sukuna. For sure when the, this fight and beat let's wait for All it. This it's not just the brat. They've all leveled up their fundamentals in cursed energy strengthening. I thought that was a universal buff. I really did. But then I forget, I forget which statements are going to made recently. I think it was legit the Ryu statement. Like, yeah, your durability's gotten way better. The curse energy strengthening ended up very specifically just being in terms of reinforcing their bodies. It didn't necessarily explain any stat leaps for anybody outside of that. Like, they shouldn't be any faster, they shouldn't be any stronger, or anything like that. So, like... And remember, these guys cap out beneath Ryu. Beneath Ryu. All of them, even Yuta Akotsu. This isn't... It isn't looking good. But once again, if you go with the idea that we're wrong on that, and it's not just defense, it's an overall stat buff, then yeah, Hakari should benefit from that too. He should. He should. Will he benefit more than Yuta did? Eh, questionable, Students but let's see. have gotten tremendously stronger. Man. Hakari is no different. In fact, Hakari is a character alongside Yuta that was sent by Gojo to be the two people you should gauge as Sukuna becomes weaker than them in order to intervene. So do you really want me to believe Hakari got stronger to die and lose? And Arame is going to go help Sukuna who just hit a black flash and make the odds even worse? I get it if Hakari was fighting Sukuna, but let's not have that Sukuna killing everybody energy with Urame. She is not Sukuna. So the question is, why has Gege stalled this fight for so long? 
I think there's multiple reasons and scenarios as to why Gege is doing this, and all of them lead to Akari eventually fighting Sukuna. Assuming Urami loses before Sukuna since he's the big final boss, then Sukuna is just in really good condition right now and won't lose anytime soon. I think it makes sense for Gege to finally pan over and conclude this fight between Urami and Akari before you see what conspires with Kusakabe and Sukuna, or we could cut back in the middle of that fight after some time. Since we're no longer at a critical point of contention with Sukuna, because you know, it's Kusakabe that's about to fight him, so it's likely we could get focused on this fight against Urame. There's three scenarios I have built up in my mind after Akari beats Urame. First one is that Akari helps Yuji fight against Sukuna. Currently Yuji is vomiting blood. He's trying to get his healing under control and chose Yee. 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 I want to say yee to me. I mean I wouldn't mind Hikari and Yuji jumping. That would, that'd be nice. Honestly it's just the thing though like they'd be <laughs> this is gonna sound so they'd be so boring to Sukuna. Like like, literally two punch and kick merchants. <laughs> literally two punch and kick merchants. One who's a bit more immortal than the other. I mean, like, I, I, I don't think so. But then again, with 254, because I guess he recorded this with two, before 254. This video came out a little bit ago. So, like, I wouldn't knock it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't knock that be a, being a cool jump formation. It's just that without either of them, like, it's kind of like, but you know what? It works. It works because it could be the spear and shield format, where Yuji's the spear trying to free Megami, while Hikari's the shield taking all the lethal attacks. So, you know, I, I can rock not. with that. I can rock with it. Let's see. Oh, one thing I also do want to tackle, because I can't glaze over it. Yeah, I mean, I, here's the thing. Yeah, logistically, on a writing level, it wouldn't make sense to have Urame beat Hikari. It just wouldn't. It wouldn't. Like... Especially after all the narrative slop Hakari's gotten, it just would not really make any sense. You that I'm not gonna say it would do like active, negative, malicious damage to the narrative, but like it wouldn't help it. It wouldn't help it at all, and it wouldn't really feed into it. And while I do like the dynamic of Akari versus Urume, with how Gege's been off screen in the fight, I think a lot of the potential for the battle itself and its interesting choreography and the dynamics that we gotta definitely play into with like the inhumanity of both characters and how they view humanity in spite of their inhumanity, like all that, while I think it could still happen, I feel like a lot of the hype behind that is sort of faded. So, yeah, Ur Urame off screen or even on screen defeating Akari has basically no value. If we're, if we're willing to sack Kenny to Takaba as easily as we did to, to the Takaba Yuta combo, we're definitely more than willing to sack Urame. Again, these on. two will inevitably but intervene see. in this Kusakabe versus Sukuna fight at some point. They could possibly have some cool moments as brothers fighting alongside each other, but as we currently know, Sakuna's output is being replenished due to Black Flash, and we're all aware of how easily Sakuna disassembled Chozo. He and Kusakabe won't be able to buy Yuji enough time in order to attempt to save Megami. That's where Hakari comes in. Akari being able to absorb damage better than anyone in the series and was stated to have the best regeneration makes him a huge problem to Sakuna. Unless Sakuna hits a world cunning slash on his head, but just chill out, gather tryhards. Akari being able to tank so many abilities from Sukuna and potentially having other hacks abilities that could aid a survival like Suda's Thing is though, <laughs> crazy. I know it's gonna be crazy. You could, especially after you survived, the same thing Goto survived. Depending on how this slash hits Akari's head, I would not even be shocked if Giga just let Akari live that. Because the thing that made Kashimo strikes so dangerous to Akari is that they kind of had like a burst effect, or at least some of them did, where like they didn't just cleanly tear through. They like, they hit Hikari's arm and detonated it off. They tore through Hikari's gut and like blew up a portion of it. It was very messy, very dirty. Like even the one that went straight for his head, it was literally trying to explode his brain, but his automatic RCT picked up enough to, that he could expel the curse through his nose. Well, splitting this mantle, as crazy and as powerful as it is, after seeing Yuta just get caught and held together and presumably survive it, like, even one that went straight through Akari's head, say he doesn't die, say he gets the Kenjaku treatment as his dome piece sliced straight through, as long as there's no, like, knockback momentum and he doesn't fall away and his, and, like, the top of his brain doesn't fall away, if it's legit, like, like, Jenga, where, like, you know, there's the piece of Akari's head gets removed and it's like, ah! And like a whole floor falls. As long as it falls right back on, it should just heal. I wouldn't even be sh I, like like I said. The main hope I have for Akari is him 
forcing Sukuna to diversify, forcing Sukuna to try out different things, forcing Sukuna to resort to other types of techniques, whether it be Fuga or whatever else, because Hikari is generally that immortal, that slashing and cutting him just doesn't work, even if it is World Cutting Dismantle. Of course, that would have the knock-on effect on making World Cutting Dismantle seem whack and weaker, but like, that's an easy trade-off for me. I mean, it's fine. Like, once again, World Slash has kind of been losing. Like, he's pulling it out on anybody and everybody. He pulled it out on Higuruma. He pulled it out on Yude. He's pulling it out. He was about to pull it out because of Kabe and 254. Like, there, th there's no... I'm not going to say there's no weight to it, but there's much less weight to World Cutting Slash than what feels like there was initially. It doesn't feel as strangely unstoppable as it did. Heck, technically, you could argue that fell the moment Kashim was able to dodge even a portion of it. So, like... Ah, I'm more than willing to sack. It might as well. Might as well. Well, any damage... And if you believe like me that Akari more than likely has things up his sleeve from the time skip training, it could also be a potential factor. Akari being a nuisance to Sukuna could help give openings for Yuji to try to get through to Megami, which in my opinion will be the downfall of Sukuna. Since it's shown to us that if your connection with the host is tampered, it will weaken you drastically, like it did for Sukuna from when he first took over Megami's body. From then, Yuji or other potential factors can find a way to defeat Sukuna. Second scenario is the three heavy hitters versus Sukuna. And they all kind of come into the battle at the same time, which would be cool. I mean. Wait a second. Hold on. Shoot, no, I'm on the... That legit looks like one of my thumbnails. I'm popping over in the computer. Hold on, that legit looks like one... Ah, did I do that? Did I make that? I almost want maybe maybe I'm huffing Kobe. I know it's literally so basic, but it legit from the impact to the underlying. Hold on, Sukuna versus Hakari, Yuta, and Maki. Is that your boy? Is that your boy? Hold on, hold on. You know what? Let me let me pop into. The I'm sorry. No, it's like literally giving me flashbacks. And if I was on any other device, I'd be able to just check independently. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me go to the Googler. Ah, uh, nope, nope. Doesn't look like it, huh? But again, yeah, this is that's like an easy, but like something about that image very immediately reminded me of myself. But I guess you know it could just be lost. It could just be lost to time. Ah, uh, no. But let me see. Heavy hitters versus Sukuna. That is your boy. Ah, I knew it. I knew it. Yo. <laughs> My computer screen's going to look mad dirty. Hey, low key, little soft plug, little soft plug. Unless, because that's the first thing that pops up. And, I, and actually, yeah, that's generally just the first thing that pops up in general. So I think that's your boy. That is, that, yep, yeah, from the impact. Yeah, that is me. Okay, superior IQ. Nice little, nice little soul call back. I take that, I take that, I take that, I take that. You know, superior IQ. You want to call that, bro? You let's let me know. Let me know. <laughs> but that, I thought that was me. I thought that was me. Sorry. I know that was crazy. But I, I'm always on the lookout because I think I've gotten sizable enough that some people have seen me in bigger places than I think. So, Utsu, Maki, and Hikari but enter on the battle simultaneously. I say this because in the time we see Akari versus Urame, it's more than enough time for Maki and Yuta to join the battle. This is assuming Maki will be out cold due to the Black Flash, yeah. which is possible due to Kusakabe's dialogue saying he's the last one left. While Yuta's case, he did just get hit by a World Cunning Slash, but it's important to note that it was a slash with very low output from Sakuna because he was very weakened, and I would argue his output was lower than the time he fought Gojo, and hit him with the slash. Thus why Yuta didn't get sliced in half like Gojo. So Yuta's body not being completely severed. Yo, we, he, he's, he's in half. Yeah. Like, world, here's the thing, at least in my opinion, y'all can disagree on this if y'all want to, him with but slash. like, Thus why Yuta didn't on. get sliced in half like Gojo. So Yuta's body- Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Yo, we literally see the blade pass through him. He's in half, y'all. Like, it's okay. He got held together, but he's in half. <laughs> and, like, world cutting dismantle is the only dismantle where output doesn't matter. Because it's spatial deletion. It has that property. The output doesn't matter at all. And if you go with the general consensus that dismantle speeds are uniform anyway, the output on world cutting slash legit never matters. It's okay that he's in half and he survived that. It's just that he now needs to be put back together. 
So I don't know. I don't know. I see a lot of people. I remember when this chapter first came out. A lot of people were like he wasn't actually cut in half. It didn't actually go through. It, it, it went. It's a point of World of Kings. It's supposed to slice you in half. It makes it likely he can return after getting healed by Shoko, as Shoko's output could probably be boosted by Utahime right. for all we all know. Right. And who knows, on Yuta's way to the battlefield, he can use RCT to heal up Maki. These three would then come to Yuji's aid and do some... You guys are probably wondering how I... Language. Yeah, I should yarn it. Editing me. You got work to do, buckaroo. You got work to do. You got a job to do. Oh, you Kari's domain would factor into all this because he needs it to become a human sponge. There might be Sukuno's domain involved or Yuta. How would he get his off? The convenient thing about Kari is that he doesn't actually need his domain up. In fact, when he gets Jackpot, his domain breaks. This would then allow for moments for Yuta to use his domain or even Sukuna. Remember, regarding Sukuna and Yuta, it's likely neither of them can maintain their domain for long since we know taking severe damage will cause your domain to crumble, which at that stage of the fight, they both should be taking heavy damage at moments. And side note, Yuta can probably only expand his domain once, so it's most likely Sukuna was going to be the possible hinder to Akari's domain. What's also convenient is that Akari can most likely instantly get Jackpot the moment he opens his domain. I made a whole video on that, but it's essentially yeah, a 75% right. chance of Akari getting Jackpot, assuming the first one came from normal mode. Akari's domain wouldn't occupy the battle too much, unless that's the plan, so there could honestly be some cool sick moments with characters going back and forth with domains. Since we won't be seeing any domain clashes because no one's clashing with Sukuna domain at all. Third scenario is that Yuta and Akari become one of the sickest duos in JJK. There was a statement from Yuta saying him and Akari will be fighting Sukuna. At this point, it's not clear if they planned out who's fighting who, but I think it's applied they already made their plan to fight Sukuna. We see they're planning what to do with Kenjaku on the off chance they beat Sukuna. This could mean they already thought about that portion and are now focusing on Kenjaku. There's many remarks of them overlooking beating Sukuna, like Kuzakabe and mentioning that if they beat Sukuna, results in their whole squad getting wiped out. Is it really worth it? And Angel mentioning again, if they beat Sukuna. There's more examples like this in this conversation, with them trying to figure out what to do after they fight Sukuna. So Akari joining this battle after some time could be what Yuta and the rest are counting on. So I'm thinking, Maki could potentially recover from this Black Flash quite early. Maki's body is built different, could make sense that a Black Flash doesn't put her out for too long, and continue to fight Sukuna and help Yuji until Yuta and Akari arrive, and they become this generation's DX, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels. Listen man, I don't know about you, I agree. I agree. I think here's the thing with Yuta and Akari, particularly as a duo, they have the potential to essentially omni combo into each other. Think of anything and everything Yuta can do, and how much easier it would be if Sukuna was in a full Nelson. And Yuta didn't have to worry about the person who's putting Sukuna in a full Nelson. <laughs> Like, you could legit have it, especially if Yuta can't open domain again, because once again, he's not Satoru Gojo, unless he gets some sort of six eyes buff off screen, like, he shouldn't come back with the ability to open domain too many times, but think of every lethal technique that has, like, massive splash damage range, like Love Beam or anything like that, that Yuta may have had to refrain from using on Sukuna because Yuji was still there. Sure, the sure hit was off, but everything else wasn't. That could have led to certain suppression on Yuta's end. With Akari there, he does not have to worry about that. And with Akari's regen speed, it's very likely every single attack that Sukuna is taking from spamming massive AoE crazy Yuta. Akari, he's laughing and dancing through it as he keeps punching Sukuna in the mouth. So like, you can, I can see the vision. The vision is there. The vision is open. My eyes have opened. This is reality. On like on some tight beat like that. So yeah, easily Hakari and Yuta could be one of the most dangerous deals. A more evolved version of the spear and shield idea that you have with Yuji and Hakari instead. You give that to Yuta and Yuta could just wild out. Once again, it depends on whether or not Yuta's willing to just drop Sukuna, which he should be at this point. Like there's no reason to like I get it, Megami's important. He should be saved. Sack him. Sack him. Sack him. At this point. But Yuta fans will admit this because they see. don't like to associate themselves with Akari. But whether you like it or not, that guy stuck to Akari like glue. Yuta and Akari are the students that get praised by Gojo the most. Akari first being mentioned alongside Yuta, they have the most potential in rivaling Gojo. Gojo advising the students to only jump in when Sukuna is weaker than Yuta or Akari. These two most definitely have the utmost respect for each other as well. Yuta goes as far as mentioning Akari worked up is stronger than him. And even hypes up Akari when mentioning that Kenjaku can't both of them. 
while they fight Sukuna. Akari in his fight with Arame praises or respect to Yuta by admiring him. And even more recently, he makes a funny remark to him as well, showing that these guys live rent free in each other's head. They could walk into the battle on some Goku and Vegeta thick fist, looking cool. But that's pretty much all. I'm anticipating a crucial Akari moment that's going to come when he intervenes language, against language. Kuna. Akari doesn't get a piece of Sukuna. This entire war, then this video will be pretty. But that's all, guys. Let me know what you guys think that below. Take care. Language. Peace. Toji Fusha Girl, former member. Whoa, 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 completely, completely separate video. I'm going to react to you later, bucko. Relax, relax, chill, chill, chill. You're going to get your moment. You're going to get your moment. Not right now, though. Not I right know now. Gonna... Let me leap back to the original. All right. W video, w video. Honestly, I'm I'm more fine with the latter scenario than I am with the initial scenario. I'm not going to lie. Even as a person who's not an Akari hater, despite what whatever slander Akari fans may try to put on me. I'm not an Akari hater, I swear. I swear. Please, 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 please I'm not an Akari hater. But that aside, I do agree. I think that is like the most logistical sequence of events where Hikari ends up playing support. And like shield and or wall to other characters who can do real damage. Which is unfortunate. Once again, it kind of pushes the Hakari as a pillow puncher narrative. But hey, pillow puncher narrative is just, just fine. So overall, I'm leaning away and rocking with the second half. My my favorite hypothetical scenario is... Hey, it's the one that... Uh, where is it? It's, it's the... <laughs> it's number two. It's all three of the heavy hitters jumping Tsukuna with Yuji there. There's a reason your boy made a video about it a couple months back. That's the one I really, really, really want to see. So, I'm leaning towards that. But what do you guys think? What do you want Hakari to do in the battle against Sukuna? And do you believe he will save Jujutsu Kaisen? Please let me know in the comment section down below. But if you made all the way to the end of this video, please leave. Immortal Madman. Immortal Madman in the comment section down below. I thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that little notification bell. And make sure you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Superior IQ. If you somehow are here, I I don't know, I doubt it. But if you somehow are here, you may not wait to the end of this video. Hey, let me know. If, you may not leave a call out. I don't know. I like I like his editing style a whole lot. I think it could be fun to do. But with that being the case, also make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button, everything. Please, I help, help, help. I need it. But with that being the case, I also have a Patreon link down below where you. Yes, you can donate for as low as one. Kind of one. Delmont to get things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You can also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks will include the live reaction to the very next chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen, along with ad-free variations of all my videos. And if you become a twenty-five dollar patron or a twenty-five dollar member, you can order whatever video you want. Now, I thank you so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Adam the Pencil, writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to our three lower members, O'Connor Plays, Greyhound, Akids Void, Astro, Eternal Flame, Teen Midgal, Quarentia Tala, and Red Wolf 4765. And I'd like to give a thank you to our five dollar patrons, Steron, Sean, Panda Goat, Midnight Lord 21, Marcus, Kevin, Igneal, and Ehak1. And I'd like to give another thank you to our seven dollar members, Autumn's Mornings Lazo and Sick Addiction. And I'd like to give a hefty thank you to our $10 member, Banana Phone. And I'd like to give a big old thank you to our $10 patrons, Joaquin, Jermaine, and Idem Okami. And I'd like to give a big gargantuan thank you to our $25 patron, China Doll 9 And another big gargantuan, juicy, scrumdly, thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.